This is the FL Sun T1, and it's pretty much like the FL Sun S1, but it's smaller, lighter, and less expensive. So let's see if it's any good. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, and I'll tell you a little more about them later. But you can hear this machine is super loud. The print quality is good. I mean, they went super overkill on the motion system as well as the part cooling system, you know, using this CPAP style fan that lets you have an incredibly powerful part cooling fan located off of the print head. In terms of speed, you're not gonna be able to do much better than this. This is a 10 minute Benchy that's faster than pretty much anything else on the market that's at this price point especially. This printer retails for $5.99. If you could get it on sale, then it'd be an even better deal. But really, you're gonna be comparing this against some Core XY machines like the K1C and the P1S. So those type of enclosed high-speed printers. Fortunately, they wanted to address the sound issue and they provide this pre-sliced model on the machine. And you can just put this over the top and that's kind of like a silencer of sorts. Basically quiets this machine down to somewhat tolerable levels. And at this point, it's less noisy than a vacuum cleaner. I'll pull up my decibel meter and see exactly what it's at. We'll get one arm's length away. We'll see what we're at. Basically with the fan off, you're looking at around 60 decibels. With the fan on, it's around 68. So it's not the worst thing in the world. And you're basically getting speed for that trade off. Now, both the S1 and the T1 have incredibly fast accelerations and maximum speeds, which makes these machines a little bit, uh, I guess, terrifying to work with. I had a print earlier where the filament ran out and I was like, I'll just grab the next spool and just feed it in there as it's printing. It's actually really scary with how fast this thing moves and I thought it was gonna hurt me. So, you know, like this just moves faster than your hand moves, basically. If you think about most 3D printers, they're moving about as fast as you would move with your hand, maybe a little bit faster, but this one is like two to three times faster than your hand is, which, you know, interacting with it becomes a little challenging. But it's got a nice touch screen here, which allows you to control everything. One minor gripe I have is whenever I'm moving this thing around, I accidentally pop this loose. And then there's just a ribbon cable back here. And if these ribbon cables get damaged, then they're really annoying to fix. You basically have to get OEM parts from the manufacturer and wait for them to send them to you. And they're somewhat fragile. And this isn't bolted in or anything, so usually I'll be moving this around on the floor. It tips forward and then this comes loose. So maybe having the, the screen somewhere else, I know on some of FL Sun's earlier models, they would mount the screen on the side. Maybe you guys want to take a closer look at this thing while it's printing, so we'll zoom in a little bit. The Delta system is unique, I mean, it's, definitely something that sets this printer apart. But what is the point of the Delta system? It makes the printer much larger. I mean, just look at this thing, super tall. Um, so it takes up a lot of space and you're basically doing a lot of trade-offs to get a little bit more speed. Also, the bed being round, I think it's a 260 millimeter diameter bed. If you look at the equivalent square bed, I would say it's pretty similar to the Ender 3 sized bed of 220 by 220, just because you can't print square parts and square parts are pretty common. Round parts are pretty common too though, so it's not a huge deal. And usually you're printing a bunch of smaller stuff that's stacked in the plate. Um, speaking of the prints, let's take a look at this little guy here and take a look at the print quality. I think it's actually quite good even when you're printing at high speeds. I know that 10 minute speed benchy seems fast, but you know what else you can do in about 10 minutes? You can start your own website using today's sponsor, Squarespace. Just head to squarespace.com, find some templates. Now let's try this one. This looks cool and hip. It'll set up your website, and in seconds it'll take you to this page going over some of the features of Squarespace. And starting with this template, we can edit the page and change this to whatever we want. Let's say we want to make a website for 3D Benchy lovers. And, uh, you know, we can post pictures of our speed Benchies and all sorts of stuff. So that's the really nice thing about Squarespace. It's really easy to get started and set up. So if you want to get started making your own website, go to squarespace.com slash Nathan Builds Robots to start your free trial. You can set up your website however you like, and you only have to pay when you want to launch your website. 
Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this episode and let's get back to the 3D printing. So print quality looks great. I'll uh, take a look at the bench and when that finishes up, we can also take a look at this um, silencer thing. It looks pretty cool. So the way that they're able to make it quieter is they've got a bunch of internal cavities inside of the bottom of this thing. So this must have taken a little bit of work and optimization to get this right. But it does a pretty good job of quieting this machine down. I mean, you can hear it right now when I put this back on. It reduces that like higher frequency noise. It makes it a little more pleasant to be around. I did have one issue on this, this print. When I was about halfway through, the filament runout detection sensor got triggered because, uh, well, the filament ran out. Then I loaded some new filament up and then it, uh, it had a false positive. So there might be some issues with moving the print head around so fast. There could be some vibrations that caused that filament to come up off the sensor for just a split second. Um, but overall, I would expect this machine to be pretty reliable. Now, one of the main differences between a Core XY machine and this Delta machine is that in a Core XY machine, you've kind of got this, this plane where all of the motion happens. That's where all your belts are, the print head is, and all that. And it's really easy to keep your hand out of that area. You can hang out underneath it and deal with your printed parts, or you can hang out above it, feeding it filament and doing other sorts of tasks. Um, but in this machine, the keep out zone is much larger. Like you could put your hand right here, but the print head could whack into your, your hand. Versus with a Core XY machine, it kind of has a natural keep out zone. You definitely want to keep this door shut to avoid anything getting hurt. That's more of a problem for me. I like to mess with my prints a lot. And there we go, there's our Benchy. Let's take a close look. And that noise is pretty annoying. Yeah, I can turn that fan off. This machine also has LEDs on the side here and uh, it's got a webcam, so it's pretty full featured. My main complaints have to do with the overall size of the machine as well as the noise that it makes. But if you just need something that's high speed and you like the print volume that you get with this machine, then it could be a good option for you. Let's take a look at the speed benchy. Yes, speed benchy. It's the ultimate measure of the usability and quality of a printer. Just kidding, it's, uh, it's not all that informative, but it does tell you how fast the printer goes, which is good to know. Overall, it looks pretty good. You know, better quality than most speed benches that I see nowadays. Now that the machine is kind of slowed down, let's take a look at some of the components we've got in here. So these rods on the S1 are carbon fiber. On this one, they feel like some kind of lower cost plastic that might be fiber reinforced. Maybe they're fiberglass but they're a little flexible, which indicates to me that they're probably not carbon fiber. It's kind of neat the way that they have the, um, the spool storage up here. That way it's inside of the printer. It's in a nice little area where the, the stuff doesn't run into it. And it looks kind of tight in there, but I ha actually haven't had any issues with, uh, let me just turn it off so I'm not back driving the motors. But, it looks kind of tight in there, but I haven't had any issues with anything running into that spool. If you want to use larger spools or you just don't want to have it inside of the print area, there's also a hole up at the top so you can feed filament in through the top if you'd like. Other than that, I don't know, that's, that's about it. It's, uh, the printer works as expected. In terms of something that you can just buy and unbox and put together, and well, this one took me one to two hours to put together since it doesn't come pre-assembled. Um, it's a pretty good machine. The main question is, would you get this over the Creality or Bamboo Lab or Prusa alternatives at similar price points? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, well, that's about it. That's all I wanted to show you on this machine. If you've got any more questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, we got a USB port. Yeah, cool. Cool machine, right guys?